Hi, and welcome to Optimum TV. Today, I'm joined by David Reynolds, CEO of Cambridge-based Locus 23. Locus 23 is developing a new small molecule therapy for Huntington's disease. So, David, welcome to Optimum TV, and tell me a little bit about Huntington's for a start. So Huntington's disease is an inherited, autosomal dominant inherited neurodegenerative disease, uh, relatively rare, about one in 7,000 to 10,000 people are affected by it. So what that means in kind of real terms is there's about 30,000 patients in the US who have symptoms, but there are many more who carry the mutant Huntington gene and will go on to develop Huntington's later in their life. The disease has three kind of cardinal uh, symptoms to it. So movement disorders, uncontrolled movements, often described as dance-like, that are the most obvious symptom. But actually, the more debilitating symptoms to patients and their carers are the psychiatric and cognitive symptoms. At the moment, there is no effective therapy that can slow or halt the course of the disease, although there are some medicines that can help manage some of the symptoms. Typically, it takes between well, around 17 years from symptom onset uh, to death. And onset usually happens in midlife, 40s or 50s, but can be a lot earlier or a lot later. So there's obviously a, 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 an enormous unmet medical need and the need to find treatments for this disease. OK, and tell me uh, what Locus 23 is doing and how its potential therapy is different from the tack that other companies are taking. So Huntington's is caused by an inheritance of a, a mutant Huntington gene, and the mutation is an expansion of a triplet repeat, so three DNA letters, CAG. Uh, now, in, in the normal gene, you have less than 36 of these CAG repeats. However, somebody who inherits 40 or more repeats will go on to develop Huntington's disease. And a lot of research over the last probably 25 years has focused on the Huntington protein uh, that in this expanded form uh, is toxic and leads to neuronal death. And that's certainly a key part of the disease. But what's become realized over the last probably 10 years or so based on uh, great human genetic evidence uh, and followed up with a lot of mechanistic uh, evidence in, in academic labs is that that's a secondary process. Actually, the primary process is further expansion of that CAG repeat during uh, a, a gene carrier and patient's lifetime. So although you inherit somewhere between 40 and 50 repeats, actually it expands up to hundreds of repeats. And that's what really drives the toxicity at the protein level and the neuronal death. Now that expansion is caused by um, mismatch repair, which is uh, a DNA damage repair process, or one of the many processes that is designed to keep your DNA in good working order throughout your lifetime. Your DNA has always been damaged in various different ways and needs to be kept um, in good order. Unfortunately, mismatch repair can go wrong and actually drive expansion, further CAGs added to the Huntington gene that drives the disease. So what Locus 23 is doing is focused on that process and trying to block aberrant mismatch repair to treat the disease at the most upstream uh, point of the disease. And it should be able to either slow or hopefully halt the progression altogether. Fascinating. So you're going for the top of the causative chain, a fundamental driver of disease. Um, Locus 23 has just raised £35 million in a, a fantastic Series A fundraising. Tell me who's invested in the company. So the company was started in 2019 by the Dementia Discovery Fund, which is managed by SV Health Investors. Their fund is set up to invest in neurodegenerative diseases, which includes Huntington's, and they recognised the breaking biology uh, in this area and recruited myself and Caroline Benn, our CSO, who's a, a real expert in Huntington's disease, to set up the company and drive it forwards. In 2021, the Novartis Venture Fund joined the syndicate. They'd invested in other DNA damage repair therapeutics that could see the potential of this area of biology. And just now at the Series A, Forbian have joined the syndicate. Um, they've got a lot of experience in uh, investing in neuroscience. Uh, we've been talking to them for quite some time, and they now feel that it's the right point to invest in Locus and help us carry through our uh, programs into clinical trials and hopefully onto success for patients. So you've got some big name backers there. What are you going to do with the money? Thirty-five million pounds. It's a lot of money, but uh, you know, developing such drugs is expensive. What's your timeline, and uh, what are you what are you planning to achieve? 
So our lead program is targeting a protein complex called Mutes Beta, which sits at the very top of the uh, mismatch repair pathway. So here we have a target that uh, can completely derail that mismatch repair that drives this somatic instability that causes the disease. And the target is backed up, as I mentioned earlier, by great human genetics and great mechanistic data. And we've chosen to uh, target it with small molecules because small molecules have the greatest convenience for patients, but also they're a well-precedented modality. So many of our competitors are using more complex, advanced modalities that are not particularly well proven in CNS diseases. So we thought we'd choose a small molecule approach for all of its benefits. Um, and we've also gone after an allosteric inhibitor of mutes beta, which is different from some of the other approaches of targeting this protein. And the reason we did that is to give us a better profile on selectivity and to lower the amount of drug we'd need to give to a patient uh, in the eventual therapy. So what are we doing with the money? We are taking that program through um, our IND enabling processes and then through early clinical trials to hopefully show that it's safe, well tolerated, and does what it says on the tin. Uh, and that will then give me a data package to be able to raise probably a series B to carry it through long POC studies that's necessary to show that you can slow down or halt the progression of the disease. The money will also be used to advance other parts of the portfolio, other approaches we have to stopping mismatch repair, and also um, other chemistries that we've developed on other mutes proteins that have um, potential outside of neurodegenerative disease. You've certainly got a lot to get on with. Finally, David, tell me about the name, Locus 23. It's an interesting name. Where does that come from? So it's a little bit of a nerdy name uh, in that it's a kind of play on what words associated with the disease. So the CAG triplet repeat that's expanded in Huntington's codes for uh, an amino acid, glutamine, whose one letter code is a Q. So what we are trying to do is keep the Qs low, so preventing that somatic expansion. And locus, spelled with a C, which is the normal way of spelling it, is a particular point in the genome, a particular uh, gene or, um, or mutation, you know, single, uh, single nucleic acid. So it's a kind of play on words that we're targeting a particular locus, trying to lower the cues in the disease. Um, some people get it, some people don't. You know, it's, it's kind of nerdy. One for the biochemist. David Reynolds of Locus 23. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. For more Optimum TV episodes, please visit our website, optimumcoms.com, or our YouTube channel at Optimum Comms. Thanks for watching.